back here on the Stay Human podcast with this extra special little edition here. We have Colleen Sis and Palm here. And um, you are native Californians. Yes. Additional Californians. And you were telling me earlier about your salmon returning to the river. Can you tell us? I mean, it sounds kind of funny, like the salmon returning. Where did they go? How did they yes. get gone in the first place? Who yeah. stole them? <laughs> <laughs> Who stole them, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, the, you know, uh, California has a long history. And part of that history, aside from uh, extermination of the Indian people, they also looked for everything that could make economy work here. Mm-hmm. And one of those was the salmon. They brought a fish hatchery to our river on the McLeod in the 1800s to propagate salmon and send them around the world. Mm -hmm. And so they did do that. Of course, our tribe was not thrilled about that. We held a ceremony earlier on. Uh, We sent our salmon through the ice waterfall of Mount Shasta, and we were told there they will wait. Mm -hmm. At the time, our river was full of salmon, so nobody really knew what that Mm -hmm. was about. But by 1945, when they built the Shasta Dam, they blocked the river, and no more salmon. Mm -hmm. So in 2000, uh, we heard that they were going to raise Shasta Dam by 20 feet. So by uh, 2004, we did a war dance on Shasta Dam, hoping that the world would hear us. Mm -hmm. And we got a message from New Zealand saying that they have our salmon. They have our salmon. So the salmon were sent. So they were sent to New Zealand live. They were sent by eyed eggs by ship. Eggs, okay. Mm -hmm. And. propagated in New Zealand who did yeah. not have salmon before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now our salmon are swimming and thriving in New Zealand. And we went and we danced. We have a documentary called Dancing Salmon Home, where the Maori people, the Naitahu, are willing to help us reestablish our fishery. And it's a good thing for everybody. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're in that charge now. It's a challenge to get the United States government to assist because um, in our traditions, we believe that whatever happens to the salmon happens to us. Mm-hmm. Meaning that when the salmon lost their homes on our river, so did we. Yeah. We no longer live on our river. We, no longer, we have no land on our li- river. Mm-hmm. We don't even have the right to fish the salmon if they come home. Mm. But so everything will be the, good. Is that part of the struggle as well, to bring the salmon home, but also get access to the river to be able to... Well, the, the struggle is now, mm-hmm. you know, there used to be like 14,000 Winnemum Wintu on the McLeod River watershed. Mm-hmm. Now, at the turn of the century, there's 395 mm-hmm. who made it through the extermination practices of yeah. the state. Since then, because of uh, boarding schools and military mm-hmm. and religion, mm-hmm. Uh, We only have about 126 members Mm. who actually practice and believe in the traditional ways of the tribe. So it's important to me that the salmon are the lead to to saving my people Mm -hmm. and continuing to make them uh, Winnemum. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere else in the world we can go to be Winnemum. And so these salmon are going to lead us to that place where... Uh, we're not hanging on by a thread. Mm-hmm. You know, right now we're unrecognized. Every time we hold a ceremony, it's against the law. You know, we don't have access to any uh, anything that any other tribe has. Mm-hmm. No protections for our children. No protections for our language. Nothing. How are they actually gonna come back into the waters? And what's the plan to make them uh, definitely bring comp- them home again? Yeah, definitely yeah. complicated process. The first. Of it is spiritual, always ceremonial first, and doing the ceremony protocols at, um, to spiritually call them back. Mm-hmm. So that's first and foremost. We did a war dance. I mean, uh, a war dance in 2005, where we first got word that they were over New Zealand. So um, it, it came through ceremony in the first place, and then we went in 2010 and danced on the river for them with the um, with the what do you call it? Like the lead of the Maori people, the mm-hmm. local people. And then, then then, after that, we went through the governmental process and trying to go through the bureaucratic process of getting them re- reintroduced to the McLeod River and meeting with um, Bureau of Reclamation, the Forest Service Departments, you know, Department of Interior, different entities in that regard. Um, it's been, a, it's been a, a very trying process for sure, you know, and them trying to 
say that we are not a fairly recognized tribe, so having to navigate that space as well and mm -hmm. just claiming spiritual uh, responsibility at all times to the to the land, it's always spiritual first and foremost, and then yeah. we have lawyers and stuff that help us out with and the then, wording. And then, you know, working with the, with the government and scientists, is that a whole nother level of trying to... <laughs> get them to understand that th these fish can come back and live here and this is where they're from they will remember or how is right just just real quick like like i know i remember um, back in some of the meetings they have their scientists that are hired on to try to say that um these salmon are not from around here and then we have our scientists that are trying to prove like no these are the salmon that are actually from the mcleod river so it's kind yeah. of like a science war going on a little bit and them trying to trump one another and and then it's, depending on which agency they work for, you know they have more money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but uh, just to add on to that is that the traditional knowledge of the salmon mm -hmm. exists within us because mm. we're only two generations from the salmon swimming in the river. Like my mm -hmm. father's generation had salmon in the river, mm -hmm. and so the knowledge that is carried on from there to me and to uh, older tribal members is before the dam mm -hmm. all of the science about our salmon is after the building of the dams mm. and so they have no knowledge of wild salmon yeah all the knowledge they have is of hatchery fish mm -hmm. can you tell me about that you said it was your father or your father's father who was before the dam your father my father okay can you tell me what were the kinds of things that he was telling you about life before the dam and what was that like for him personally as well as his family when the dam was being conceived right. and then constructed? That must have just been like the most... Like, right, right. Um, on our river, the, um, you know, gold was the big thing in California. Mm -hmm. But the Winnemums kept anybody from coming onto the river to seek gold. So we didn't have any hydro mining and all that kind of destruction on the river. So the salmon, by the time they recognized that salmon were abundant and plentiful and we should, you know, make some money off of them, uh, McLeod River was the best, the coldest, the one that had the most fish. And uh, during that time, uh, everybody was um, hiding, you know, from from the extermination mm. people, you know, yeah. people could make money killing Indians or panning for gold. And so either one was on the river. Mm -hmm. uh, so his life, I think, and my mom and my grandmas and everybody on the river um, was mainly to stay alive, mm -hmm. you know, in the beginnings and, and, and this going through the changes. And 1945 yeah. So this is yeah. not, we're not talking about some oh, ancient no, no, history. No. We're oh, talking no. about with, you know, yeah. very yeah. recently. The keystone of California's water mm -hmm. system is built on our land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In 1941, they passed a law to uh, take our land for the good of the people, right? Mm -hmm. And at that time, they also set up this process where they would send all of the young people, like the children... Mm -hmm. uh, to boarding school. So my mom and my dad both were sent to uh, Sherman Indian in um, Riverside, California while they built the dam. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there was no fish passage. They had done one uh, example of fish passage and it worked. The fish swam up this redwood plank, which they called the Stillwater Project. Mm -hmm. But then at the time they said, it's too expensive. It was $130,000 to implement this fish passage. They, and, and Livingston Stone, the scientist of the hatchery, said, oh no, we won't need that. The hatchery can do everything that the fish do. And of course, mm. it's been on a decline since then. Endangered species list all up and down the state. Wow. So how can people get involved in helping to bring the salmon home? Well, we have several different ways that we're, we've taken to educate people and get people involved. One of them is doing a salmon run. Um, we're calling it Run for Salmon. This is our second year. Um, it starts in September, um, September the 9th. And it starts in Vallejo, California, and it runs for two weeks. And we go from there to Sacramento. We go from Sacramento to, to Chico, California up to Redding and up on to our home, ladders, our home waters behind the Shasta Dam and 
at any point, people can follow us on Facebook. People can also look us up on Instagram on Run for Salmon, hashtag Run for Salmon. Uh, then uh, beyond that, we're also raising funds to bring our salmon back and for us to travel to New Zealand and, and develop some fish passage, um, some, some fish traps that their scientists will make and send over some some samples so that we can analyze them and make sure that they are proven um, to be part of the McLeod River. So we're raising funds for that on GoFundMe. Um, if you just look, if you just look up "Run for Salmon" on GoFundMe, that would probably be the best way. All right, well, we'll do that. We'll make sure everybody who's listening to this and watching this does that as well. Thank you guys so much for being yes, here. Thank you. And I just have, I ask everybody who comes on this show the same question. In this world that is so crazy and tries to dehumanize us so much, in what way do you stay human? How do you stay human? You know, a lot of people say uh, when we're dancing on the river, uh, don't you love America? You know, and, and it's like, I'm trying to. Mm -hmm. You know, America moved in on us. And when we dance on that river and we put our footprints down on that grounds, that are ancient grounds, that are traditional grounds, that goes back way before this ever changed the way it has changed, then in my heart I know that things will be good. When I have my son and uh, my grandkids that are putting their foot down too, it's like we still have a chance to turn this around. And that's, that's what the salmon thing is for the state right now, is that the state has to wake up. And when we're putting our foot down all the way from Vallejo, from the, from the river that runs right into the bay where the, 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 where the salmon change and they start coming up that river. We're putting down those uh, paddles, we're putting down the footprints, we're putting down the, the breathing of the people who are putting in life for generations to come after us. That's what we're doing. It's not just a fun thing, it's like we're calling the salmon home. We're calling the people to wake up to our water situation. We can't afford the twin tunnels. We can't afford the, uh, the dams that are there. Mm -hmm. We have to follow the salmon. And when we can think about following those salmon, we can be human again. Mm. But until then, we're mechanical. Mm. You know, like my grams used to say, well, those people, they're living in an artificial world. Mm -hmm. you know? Thank you. Paul, how about you? How do you stay um, human? I stay human by singing and dancing and being connected to the spiritual and being connected to our our land and and then in regard and staying true to our roots in an indigenous way and keeping the traditions going in this computerized world and um, just being true you know trying to listen to your intuition and just being connected to the spirit always and trusting and believing that we're supposed to be in such places as this in divine timing. Thank you. So make sure to tune in and check out. Can we show you show the sign up there one more time? Hashtag run for salmon. Look it up. Find out how you can be involved. Find out how you can contribute or participate in the salmon run and bring our salmon home back to where they belong here in California. Right. Yeah. For everybody. Yeah. For everybody. Thank you for being on the Stay Human show here from the California World Fest. Remember to stay human! Yeah. <laughs>